Hi everyone, Greg Newman here, the CEO of Onyx Capital Group. So we got a call recently asking how Onyx can help with the execution side of hedging and that's actually something that's not talked about that much and is actually very topical. We've had a situation where Brent's come off around $10 per barrel with the coronavirus, oversupply, etc., whatever you want to attribute to it. And what commonly happens in sell-offs is you get more buy hedging or end user hedging uh, where they're coming in to buy on what we call price dips. So it's a common theme in the market, but actually there's a lot of challenges with that kind of philosophy. And we're going to talk about some of that in this video today. So if you go to the next slide, understand this is hard to uh, read. We're going to put it, uh, repost it so you can have, have a quick read, but it's just an example of what we're going through. We're going to say is Airline X has a hedging program of a million barrels, which is essentially their average volume aggregated from their ticket sales next year. So go to the next slide. What we're essentially saying is they've seen this price dip here. So this has gone from 64 down below 62. So right, great opportunity to buy. They've got to buy a million barrels and they're choosing Brent Futures to do so. They're saying they want to an arbitrary 50%. And so immediately we're getting into territory which is no longer really hedging, it's now speculating. So first thing that happens is we see a price rally. The next thing is, well actually, there's no plan. And again, this is very common. Then we get a rally up from around 62-ish, which is initial hedge, all the way up to maybe as high as 68, which it did get to, and this is in the course of a month. So they waited you know, a month without hedging and they lost $6 a barrel. Remember, that's $6 a barrel on 500 KB using this example. That's $3 million that they've effectively not saved or you know, essentially lost if you think about where the price was and they were ready to hedge all because they were waiting for this level, which was completely arbitrary. So that is the first thing, and we always bring it back to this. If we talk to the next slide. So first thing, does the trader have a stop? So they're willing to risk you know, some amount of money to capture this slightly lower level. What is, this, what is the uh, level of which they're not comfortable anymore and they just hedge? Unfortunately, a lot of the time, they don't have a level in mind, so they just keep letting it run. So are they gonna keep going and simply not hedge? Unfortunately, a lot of the time, yes. At that point, you know, a CEO, a CFO might say, what's going on, we should have hedged, or why haven't we hedged? And it's probably too late at that point, and they need to spin it in another way, which is very common, like, oh, the market conditions would be difficult. And you know, you see this a lot with um, kind of CEOs of airlines coming out and explaining why they haven't uh, locked in a certain price. So the key thing is, you know, what is the plan? You go in, you set yourself a target, and you set yourself a stop, and that way you're capped. And this is the big thing, it's about the risk reward, ultimately. If we go back to the previous slide, you know, what I want to make really clear is you've got this price dip and that is fair enough because you're looking previously and you're saying the general volatility around a few days is around 75 cents to $1.50 per barrel. So there's no point rushing in straight away if you can see that the market is in a, you know, a choppy kind of period and we know what the, the average range is. So asking for a $1.50 barrel saving is probably not outrageous when you're in the moment. However, if you then start seeing the market trending, you've got to realize that it's no longer in a kind of volatile, not moving market or range bound market. You're now on a trend and you've got to have a stop in mind to cap your losses. Because if you don't, you're essentially saying from the difference between 62 to let's say they wanted to wait until it's 60, 50, like a dollar 50 lower, you're essentially capping the saving at a dollar 50, but you're willing to risk $6 or even more. So you're risking just, yeah, that dollar 50 saving is just not worth it if you're going to risk all this amount. And I think the real problem comes from the way it's been seen, the philosophy of it. You know, if you're not hedging, you're speculating. We always come back to that point. Why, if you're not hedging, do you not understand that actually you're running an enormous financial short position in this example? And for the 500,000 barrels they didn't hedge, if they let it run $6 per barrel, that's $3 million just because they didn't hedge. Now, if we keep going to the next slide past this, Actually, a really big oversight is the fact that it's not even just the fact that you're speculating on Brent. You're actually not realizing that you're hedging with the wrong contract in this example. You should be hedging with jet fuel. Why? Because again, it's very topical. We've had a price uh, drop from uh, 65 around to about 55 with the situation this year. But actually, jet fuel has come off around $8 per barrel relative to Brent. So that's an extra $8 on top of this move downwards. So that's $18 per barrel. And that extra $8 per barrel, of which on the 500,000 barrel example or, or on the million barrel uh, hedging program, if you're not hedging with jet fuel in this example, you've lost the chance to lock in an $8 million saving. So just by not hedging with jet fuel, you're not actually factoring in this price dislocation. And even worse, if it's then to rebound, you're not even optimizing what you could, what you could have had the chance to optimize. 
So that's something that happens quite a lot and we'll talk about it more and more as we go on. But actually, if you go to the next slide, while you're going through this, you know, this uh, lack of a plan and the price rallying against your plan, if you're not sure what to do and you don't have a kind of clear acceptance of what's happening, you go through a lot of irrational fears and biases that are very common in traders. And I think one of the key things is that guys hedging, treasurers even, CFOs, they don't realize that they are effectively traders. And if they're not hedging, they're speculating, if they're not going in and locking in what they said they were going to do, they're effectively running a position. And with that, and with losses, with the pressure, comes a huge amount of psychological strain. And that can lead to a lot of irrational decisions. Something we'll go, go on about in our next video. So thanks very much for listening, and uh, see you next time.